So we got rain on the way. We got rain forecast for around 2 p.m. this afternoon. It's currently about 9 a.m. We, now we've already poured one garage today, so this is our second pour. And the builders are coming, so the GC has to get these concrete floors in. That's why we're here today doing this. So I just wanted to go over with you, you know, if you're fighting rain, if you've got rain in the forecast, what can you do to kind of speed things up? to make sure your concrete floor gets done before that rain shows up. And that's what we're doing here today. Now I've got my normal 3500 PSI mix with fiber mesh reinforcement in this concrete. We also got our water reducer in here so we can loosen up the slump a little bit and make this easy to pour. The quicker we can get this in and sitting, the better off we're gonna be. We wanna utilize what little bit of sun we got left this morning so this concrete will set up as fast as possible. Now one other thing we're doing here today is we're using an accelerator in the concrete. Now there's a few different types of accelerator you can use. The one I like using, the one I think that works the best is the calcium chloride flake accelerator. It comes in a 50 pound bag. This is 10 and a half yards we got in here so we put two of those 50 pound bags in this mix. And the, the drive to the job today was about an hour. So, I mean, the concrete was already a tiny bit warm before it even showed up. So that's going to help accelerate the, the concrete a little bit. And then adding the two bags of calcium to the 10 and a half yards is going to even help it more. Now, there's a liquid calcium that a lot of these companies carry that if you don't have access to the bag flakes, you can use this liquid with with our companies it's called Duracell and you can add 1%, 2%, 3%, you know, 4% to that. Generally you add about 2% to help accelerate a mix in weather like this. It's about 70 degrees out. And then there's another one, there's a non-chloride accelerator called Polar Set that we have access to. I'm sure there's other names for it where you're from, but ours is called Polar Set. So that's a non-chloride accelerator. And most commercial jobs will use that because it's non-corrosive to any steel or metal that's in the concrete. I personally don't like that as much when I need my concrete to set up really fast. I just don't think it works as good. We've had really good luck with the flake bag calcium and that's generally what we use 90% of the time. So <clears throat> we started pouring here about, about 9 o'clock or so. Um, we're going to finish... We're going to finish at about 9.30 as you'll see here in a minute. And then we just need to wait for the concrete to set up so we can power trial it. And that's coming up too with the video. I'm going to show you how we power trial this and just how fast it starts setting. When you have a bag flake calcium in the concrete, the better you're going to be. Just finished up this garage, 2824. Second pour of the day. We already did a garage this morning. It's about 9.30 in the morning right now. Just one truck. He's over there washing up. So all we got to do is power trial this. We're trying to beat the rain this afternoon. It's supposed to rain around 4 o'clock, so we put some accelerator in it. we got 4 inches on top of Stego Vapor Barrier, so we're hoping it's going to dry pretty fast for us today. Now about 20 minutes after we get done pouring, the concrete's already starting to set. We don't, we usually cut down the garage door openings. We call them cutting it down. So we taper these out a little bit. So when the garage door sits on the floor, the little piece outside the garage door kind of tapers away from the garage door. And we don't usually like to, to cut these down until the concrete sets a little bit because we don't like the concrete to sag. So it only took about 20 minutes for it to be firm enough for us to start this process. Now, a lot of guys do this differently. We like to just dig out about a half inch of concrete right along the form board and then we'll scrape a taper right into the concrete because it'll hold its shape pretty good and then we'll just mag float it smooth right about even with the inside of that concrete wall so you get about eight inches of taper there and then we'll round the edges using an edger like what T is doing right now and then as we power trial as that sets up a little bit more we'll We'll mag float it, we'll trowel it, and then we'll put a, a little broom finish on it to finish it off with. And then we'll do the finished edge to make sure that outside edge is rounded really nice because it's going to be stronger if it's rounded versus if you just leave it sharp and square. 
Then we'll just let the concrete sit. We'll get the power trowel ready. We're just using a small power trowel on this today. I got I got probably 10 different types of power trowels. Uh, this is our smallest. It's a 30 inch one. And what Luke's doing right now is he's putting some blades on the bottom of the finish blades. We call these float blades. We like to make the first pass over the concrete floor with these float blades. It just makes finishing the concrete a little easier. It helps take out the bull float lines. It helps fill in any little any little dimples or divots or and it helps scrape off any tiny little humps or anything like that. So it just helps smooth the concrete out even better. And then after the first pass, we'll take the float blades off and we'll just use the finish blades that are on the, the power trowel. We like that little crane too. That little crane is definitely um, what you need if you do put concrete floors like we do. Saves your back from lifting those trowels up. So here it is about 1030. Now we got done pouring about 930, remember? So in an hour, I'm already over here walking on it. Now the concrete's setting up really, really good now. We got... We still have a little bit of sun left at this time. If you watch, watch the sky as the video goes on. Those clouds are going to start taking over and this, we're going to be losing our sun as that storm gets closer and closer to us. So the first pass I do is what we call a float. And we just like to float the concrete out first. And what this does basically is it just flat helps flatten it out even more, the surface. When you pour concrete and bull float it, it's still kind of wavy, even though it may not look wavy to the eye. If if you were to set a straight edge on it, it's going to have these tiny little waves in it. Just And that's perfectly normal. And some people have less than others, depending on how good you screed the concrete or not. But the finishing process, the power troweling, you know, is supposed to help level the surface even more. It makes the surface more dense. And eventually it's going to make it a lot more smoother as you go as long as you know what you're doing. Now I teach how to do this in my concrete underground. So if you're interested in learning how to pour and finish concrete floors, how to power trial them, how to finish them like we do, then I teach you inside the concrete underground. And the link for that will be down in the notes of the video. So the show more section, the description se section, or if you're on a cell phone, just a little down arrow off to the right, you click on that and it brings up all the links to everything in the in the video so we we uh, floated the concrete we picked the trowel back up with a crane we took off those float blades and now I'm using the finish blades and you can see how much that's really smoothing out the concrete so this is pass number two with the power trowel here and I didn't really give it much time in between floating and, and what we call this is laying it down smoothing it out with the finish blades I basically just took those blades right off and then when I'm now going right back over it with the finished blades because this stuff's really setting up fast on us now and that's what we want it to do with the accelerator so you got to be right on top of it now what I'll do here is after I get this finished pass done I'll have to decide okay do I need to start going right back over it again or can I give it a few more minutes to set up and I decided that Jeez, this stuff's setting up so fast, I just need to go right back over it. Now, this is the third pass here, and this stuff's getting really, really smooth at this point. You can see the, the clouds up top, it's getting a little hazier. We're losing a little bit of our sunshine. And Luke's measuring out what he's he was doing was measuring out for the saw cuts we'll be putting in this thing shortly. You'll get to see that too here in a minute. So I, I went right back over this thing, and at this point it's just about done. It's still a little bit what we call fuzzy from the power trial. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give that a minute here, and I'm gonna buzz right over that again, and and uh, the power trial is gonna smooth out most of that fuzz, and this is gonna be really really smooth. So I'm I shut the power trial off, gave it about 15 or 20 minutes. And actually, you can, if you look up in the sky again, you can see some of that haziness went away and we're getting a little bit more sun here. So that's even a bonus for us at this point. So I'm just going to, now right now the concrete is rock hard. So all this process has taken us, you know, we started power trialing about 10.30. It's a, probably about 11.15-ish right now, 11.30. 
So we've gone over this thing now about four times in the next hour. And the concrete is basically done. It's, it's starting to what we call burn out or shine out. You can kind of tell it's turning a little bit black. There it is, 11.30 right there. Under the power trial, that means it's done. So it's not really going to get any smoother than this right now. So we're going to lift that off. Now we're starting to measure out and snap our chalk lines for our saw cuts. And I mean, this whole process now, now that the concrete's done, if it rained right now, it wouldn't really hurt the concrete. It's hard enough and dense enough so that the rain's not going to bother it. So we're in pretty good shape here as far as this rain showing up. And now we're just measuring out for the saw cutting. But we want to control any cracks that might happen. We saw cut all our concrete floors. If you've seen any of my videos, then you've seen us cut floors before. We're using what our little electric soft cut saw. We also have a gas powered one we use most of the time, but that's on the first job we did today with Darren, so he's got that one. So we're gonna saw just one down the middle each way, and then we're gonna saw or cut across that little three foot pass door to try to control any cracks that might come off those joints right there. This works really, really good for controlling cracks. You can see the sky's a little hazier right now. Those clouds are starting to fill in a little bit more. Saw on a floor like this takes probably about, I don't know, 15 minutes for us to do this. So it doesn't take very long. And we can do it with these saws, these special saws, a, a, saw, a green cut saw. So we can do it right after we pull the power trowel off. And they don't damage the concrete at all. They don't ravel the joint. The joints are nice and clean, nice and smooth. So they go down about an inch. In a four inch floor, that's all you need is about 25% down from the top and the concrete will want to crack right in that joint. And that's exactly what you want it to. You don't want it to develop random cracks just wherever it wants to. So this is how we pour a floor basically from start to finish in about three hours. And you know if you're thinking of pouring a floor and you got rain forecast for the afternoon then you're going to want to do something pretty similar to this so you don't miss out on your pour. You know, we've got umpteen pours scheduled throughout the week. So we got to kind of figure out ways to accelerate the set times so we don't miss out on all these pours. In this month, you know, this was the month of July this year that we did this. And it rained for 22 out of the 31 days of this month. So if we just don't pour in all those days, then we get really backed up. So we got to figure out how we can accelerate these mixes to get some jobs done. And this is how we do it right here. I'm going to give you a finished shot of the floor when we're done. You know, it's still going to have a little bit of that dust on it from the sawing, but this is what it looks like when we get all done. So again, guys, thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed yet, please go hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you on the next video.